Okay, hi everyone, I'm James Hart and welcome to this Orbex Trader Education Session where we're going to take a look at one of the most popular technical indicators, which is of course the RSI indicator. Now, although I'm sure that many of you are familiar with this indicator already, in which case hopefully this will be a nice refresher course for you, for those of you who aren't familiar with this indicator, what we're going to do in this session is walk through exactly what the indicator is, talk about how you can use the indicator to both analyze and trade the markets, looking at some specific setups and techniques, and we'll also discuss some of the pros and cons of the indicator while also looking at some advanced trading methods. So as ever, let's jump straight in. And remember, if you have any questions during the presentation, please just ask as we go along and uh, I'll make some time to stop. And also we'll leave some time at the end for any questions that you might have. So the RSI indicator, what is the RSI indicator? So the relative strength index is an indicator which was developed by a technical analyst, Wells Wilder, and it's a momentum indicator, meaning that it measures the strength of price moves in the market, and it's also a bound oscillator. So this means that the indicator oscillates between a lower and an upper bound. Now, essentially, what the indicator is looking to do is measure the magnitude of gains against the magnitude of losses over a specific look back period to identify momentum in the market as either overbought or oversold. And as with all of the classic technical indicators, its popularity and its effectiveness is due mainly to its simplicity. So the indicator looks like this then. It appears in the sub panel below your price charts on your MT4 platform. So you can see that we have an upper level of 100 and a lower level of a zero. But then you'll notice that we have these two threshold lines in place, the 30 and the 70. So the 70 level identifies where momentum is overbought in the market. And the 30 level identifies where momentum is oversold in the market. Now, although these two levels are customizable, so you can change their parameters, the 30 and the 70 are the settings which are used as a default. And then also you can see we have a 14 look back period. So as with all momentum indicators, then the most common trading methods and uses in terms of analysis apply to reversals and divergences. So when we're looking to use the RSI indicator in our trading, these are the two methods which we're really focusing on, trading reversals and trading divergences. So, for example, if we identify that an RSI reading of 70 um, signals overbought momentum in the market, then looking for selling opportunities based on these readings, anticipating a correction in momentum and a downward correction in price can be a simple yet effective way to approach the market and vice versa, looking for buying opportunities when the indicator is giving an oversold reading. So let's take a look at an example on the charts then, and I'll walk you through how the indicator maps price action and the relationship between the indicator and price action and how we can identify trading opportunities based on the signals we're getting with the RSI indicator. OK, so you can see on this chart then, we have a daily chart of the dollar yen here, and you can see that I've highlighted a few different instances on the chart where the indicator has moved into extreme territory, so even moving into oversold territory or overbought territory, and then I've highlighted the accompanying period of price action so that you can get an idea of how price action, uh, how price reacts around the different indicator readings. So to begin with then, you can see that we get this sharp decline in dollar yen. We have these big bearish bars extending to the downside. So we've got a really nice steady sell-off. We move down into this low area here, and you can see that the indicator moves down into the overbought, uh, sorry, the oversold region here. So you can see the indicator has crossed below that lower threshold, the 30 threshold, indicating that momentum is oversold in the market. So bearish momentum is overextended. And then from this point here, you can see that the indicator starts to correct higher. So we move up off that oversold territory, and you can see that price action starts to move up as well. So we correct higher off these lows, and you can see that we put in a really strong rally to the upside. We get a really long period of uh, consecutive bullish bars here. So a lot of green candles showing there's a lot of buying pressure in the market. And you can see that this is confirmed by the moves we're seeing in the indicator. 
So the indicator is rising steadily to as price is rising. So we rise all the way back up to this high point here, and you can see that what happens is the indicator at this region moves to the overbought threshold. So from this low point here in price and where the indicator was in the oversold region, we've moved all the way up to the other side of the indicator, and momentum is now classified as overextended to the top side. So we've got bullish momentum overextended to the top side, and then from this point here, you can see we get a correction lower. So the indicator starts to move lower, showing that buying momentum has waned and that selling pressure is growing. And then you can see accompanying this move in the indicator, price action is also reflecting this story. So price action is moving lower as the indicator is moving lower. So we trade all the way down to this low point in the chart. And you can see with the indicator, interestingly, this time, we don't actually get all the way down to the oversold threshold before what actually happens is we bottom out here. You can see that we get this small double bottom in price and we trade all the way back to the top side. So price rallies strongly higher from this point. We trade all the way back up to this high point here. And you can see what's happening with the indicator is that it's basically tracking the moves that we're seeing in price. OK, so what we're seeing in price is uh, the indicator. What we're seeing in price, rather, is price moving higher and the indicator moving higher, confirming that there's buying pressure in the market. Now, at this point here, once again, we move into extreme territory. So what's happened is the indicator has crossed the overbought threshold here. So we've risen above that 70 threshold. So you can see the 70 limit on the indicator, which, remember, identifies momentum as being overextended to the top side. So we have overbought momentum on the RSI indicator. And then from that point there, you can see that price tops out and we actually reverse and sell off again, trading all the way down to the bottom. So hopefully you can see now just from this basic example how effective the indicator can be in tracking reversals in price. So whether uh, over quite an extended period here, what we've seen is the indicator broadly tracking the moves that we're seeing in price. And then the areas where the indicator has moved into extreme territory have tended to yield reversals in price. OK, so you can see that to begin with, we've got price moving down into this low phase here. The indicator moved into oversold territory. And as the indicator came back up off oversold territory and started moving higher, so too did price rally back up. From the top side here, then you can see as the indicator hit overbought territory, price stalled its rally and we reversed and traded lower. Now we didn't make it all the way back to oversold territory here. We stalled in the middle of the indicator before price action reversed and traded all the way back up to the top side. But interestingly, once again, as the indicator moved into overbought territory, you can see that, that really strong rally in price topped out and reversed and traded lower. So again, hopefully what this is showing you is just a really simple, basic um, example of how this indicator can be effective in tracking the moves in price and most importantly, highlighting the turning points in price. So with that in mind, then let's talk about the first and most basic way in which we can use the RSI indicator, which is to fade overstretched momentum. So when we talk about fading, it simply means looking to trade reversals in price as extended overextended momentum corrects. So where momentum is oversold, then to the downside, we can look to buy as the market rebounds higher. And where momentum is overbought to the top side, we can look to sell as the market corrects lower. So typically, when trading in this manner, traders will wait for confirmation. And what I mean by this is best explained through an example. So if we're looking to buy into an oversold reading, so let's look at this period here. So if we're looking to buy into an oversold reading, we need to first of all wait for the indicator to cross below the oversold threshold. So once the indicator has dropped down below that 30 level, that puts us on alert for a buying opportunity. So the market has moved into an extended phase of selling pressure. Momentum is overstretched to the downside, and we anticipate that the market is going to correct higher. However, in order to place our trade, what we want to wait for is for the indicator to actually cross back above that oversold threshold. OK, so instead of just entering a buy trade as soon as the indicator registers oversold, what we're actually doing is waiting for just a little extra confirmation 
um, and we're waiting for the indicator to cross back above that oversold threshold. And then when it does so, that's when we go ahead and enter our buy trade. So you can see looking at this period of price action here, we wouldn't have entered a long trade as price as the indicator crossed below the oversold threshold from this candle here. And we wouldn't have entered a buy trade until this point here when the indicator actually crossed back above that oversold threshold. So doing this just adds a little extra security to our trade idea and helps to protect, protect against unnecessary losing trades. Now, this isn't to say that this is going to ensure that we win every single trade we place, because obviously this isn't the case. There is no 100 percent win rate trading system. But again, what we're always looking to do is take care of our risk management and improve, try to improve our chances of success. OK, so we're always looking to do the, the best that we can to improve our chances of success. And in this case, trading with the indicator, what we're always looking to do is wait for the indicator to cross back above or below the threshold we're trading. So similarly, if we're looking to sell into overbought momentum, what we're waiting for is the indicator to cross above that over, overbought threshold. So you can see in this instance here, we cross above the overbought threshold on this green candle here. We then wait for the indicator to cross back below the overbought threshold. So you can see we trade up, we stall out at highs here, and then on this candle, this bearish candle here, we cross back below the overbought threshold. And so that gives us the go ahead to place our sell trade. OK, so this is a really basic, really um, easy way that you can start to engage the market using the RSI indicator. And it's one that works particularly well in ranging markets and also in corrections during trends. So all we're looking to do again is fade the extreme readings on the indicator. So once the indicator moves into oversold territory, we're looking for buying opportunities. And when the indicator is in overbought territory, we're looking for selling opportunities. OK, so that's the fading method. And as I say, it's very simple. We're waiting for price to move into these extreme levels and anticipating that we're going to get a correction in price due to momentum being exhausted. Now, as I say, this is perhaps the most common or basic way to use the RSI indicator. But is it necessarily the best way to use it? Now, although it's very straightforward and again, it works particularly well in ranging markets and corrections during trends. What you'll often find is that in periods where price starts to trend, this method can run into trouble. OK, so once the market starts to push heavily in one direction, if we're just looking to trade extreme readings on the indicator, we can start to run into some issues. So let's take a look at an example of this and I'll talk you through what I mean. OK, so look at the price action in the sterling dollar. This is a four hour chart. And again, this is just quickly to highlight the RSI indicator is fantastic on all time frames. So we were just looking at a daily chart. We're now looking at a H4 chart. And regardless of which time frame you use, the indicator works just as well. So if you're a position trader trading on the daily charts, it's extremely uh, effective, just as effective as it is if you're a short term trader trading on the 15 minute charts. OK, so look at this period of price action then in sterling dollars. So this is after we topped out here um, and we got this massive uh, rally to the downside. So you can see we've got a really long extended rally to the downside. Now, as price was selling off during this period, as we were seeing this extended decline to the downside, you'll notice that the indicator was pushing heavily below the oversold threshold. However, you can see that price wasn't reacting higher. OK, so if you think about what we were just talking about, where we're looking to buy into overbought, uh, oversold territory and buy in and sell into overbought territory. So if we were looking to apply that method here, if we were looking to buy price every time the indicator moved into oversold territory, you can see that there were several instances here where we simply would have been stopped out as the indicator registered these oversold readings. But price continued to move to the downside. Now, the reason for this is that the RSI indicator uses quite a basic technical calculation to measure momentum. And so it doesn't actually account for underlying order flow. So in low volume conditions like ranges, the RSI can eff effectively pick out uh, the extremes as price rotates. But once price starts heavily trending in one direction, as volume starts to flood the market, the RSI can easily get caught offside and it will generally only make very shallow recoveries. 
So as you can see, if we were just looking to use that very basic method then of buying um, price as the indicator registered over sold readings, we would have been stopped out several times. So trying to fade RSI in trending conditions is effectively, like we say, looking to pick up pennies in front of the steamroller. So does this mean then that the RSI indicator doesn't work and that you should discard it? Well, absolutely not, because what we've simply identified here are two sets of conditions, one where the RSI works really well in ranging markets and one where it doesn't in trending markets. So there are a few solutions here. Either you can look to trade uh, to fade the RSI indicator in range bound conditions only. So you look to identify the conditions which are most favorable for the RSI indicator, which, as we've seen, tend to be range bound markets. So then you think to yourself, right, I'll pull up my chart, scan through my charts each week or each day, and I'm only looking to trade RSI reversals in range bound markets. Or, for example, you can modify how you trade the RSI indicator once price starts to move into trending conditions. So, for example, you can build a rule into your system that after one losing trade in one direction, you'll only wait to trade in the other side of the RSI. So, for example, as price is selling off and we take our losing trade trying to buy over sold territory, we then say to ourselves, right, I'm not going to take another trade until the RSI crosses over and hits the overbought reading and I can place a sell trade. So if we'd adopted that method then during this downtrend, you can see after we took our first losing trade roughly here, we wouldn't have had any more trades until this point here. Now, you might think that's great, but it means, you know, I didn't have any trades in sterling dollar for whatever this period was. Let's say it's a couple of months. Now, two things to point out. First of all, no trades is better than a succession of losing trades. And also, there are a whole range of currency pairs and different instruments that you can be trading. So whilst one pair is trending, another is going to be ranging. So there will always be markets you can trade. And the key thing is identifying favorable conditions for your strategy. So it's important that you can think to yourself, right, if I'm looking to fade the RSI indicator, as we've discussed, and I know that range bound markets suit this technique the best, then I'm going to stay away from trending markets, as I know that this technique tends to struggle. So once you start to think about your trading technique in this way, it's not long before you develop yourself a fully fledged system. Now, of course, the other way in which you can uh, you can look to trade this, as we were saying, is if you wait to trade price, if you wait to trade the other side of the indicator. So in this instance, if you're waiting to trade the other side of the indicator, you can see that after you took your losing trade here, you wouldn't have had any more trades in the market until you got to this point here where the RSI indicator crossed up into overbought territory. So you can see that after this heavy extended um, bearish decline, we got a correction higher within the bearish trend. And then this gave us the opportunity to enter the market for the first time. So you can see that this gave us a really nice short trading opportunity. OK, so this is a really fantastic way then in which you can start to be a bit more clever and a bit more strategic with your trading. So, again, what we've identified here is price in a bearish trend. We know this because we've taken a loss trying to trade um, oversold territory oversold readings in the RSI indicator prices continue to move to the downside and then all we've waited for is a bullish correction higher a short term correction within that bearish trend we've waited for the RSI indicator to move up into overbought territory telling us that the correction is likely exhausted because momentum is overextended to the top side and so then we can go ahead and enter in our sell trade and then catch the resumption of the bearish trend so this is a really fantastic way in which you can start to be a bit more advanced in how you're thinking about applying your RSI indicator trading strategies. So when we're looking to fade the RSI in then, and we're looking for momentum to signal exhaustion by flagging extreme levels, another way in which we can look to trade the RSI is looking for divergence. And this is when we start to become even more smarter with how we use the indicator. So we just looked at a very basic reversal technique um, with divergence. What we're looking for is situations where the indicator doesn't support the moves that we're seeing in price. And so alerts us to the potential of a reversal. OK, so let's take a look at an example of this then. And I'll walk you through what I'm talking about. 
Okay, so looking at this chart of dollar yen then, and you can see we've got a really good example of bearish divergence. Now, for some of you, hopefully this will be jumping off the screen and you'll be able to spot it straight away. But if it isn't obvious to you straight away, don't worry, I'm going to explain it now. So you can see here then, as price is rallying up off these lows and we're putting in higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. So as we're putting in this classic textbook bullish formation, look at what's happening with the indicator. So to begin with, the indicator is tracking the moves in price and confirming what we're seeing. So as price rallies higher and puts in higher highs and higher highs, the indicator too is moving higher and putting in consecutively higher highs. However, notice what happens after this point here. So after we make this high point here on the back of this really extended rally, you can see that the indicator actually tops out. And though, although price continues to put in higher highs, the indicator has actually started to reverse and is putting in lower highs. So once we see this dynamic occurring, what this alerts us to is the fact that bullish pressure is actually waning in the market and the skew is starting to shift in favor of bearish pressure. So buyers are actually running out of steam, even though price is still moving higher and sellers are starting to step in. So once we see this um, dynamic occurring, we know that the bullish move probably doesn't have much longer to go. And we should be on the lookout for reversal opportunities to trade to the downside. And you can see shortly after we get that third high here, we actually fall off a cliff and price craters lower. Now, similarly, let's look at an example of bullish divergence then. So again, just as we saw with the uh, bearish divergence, but this time on the other side of the market, you can see as price is selling off, putting in these lower lows, lo higher lows, uh, lower highs rather. So lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. So this classic bearish formation that we like to see in bearish trends, you can see that the indicator to begin with, again, is tracking the moves in price and confirming them. So we're seeing the indicator putting in lower lows and lower lows. However, at this point here, you can see that although price has put in a lower low, the indicator has actually moved to the top side and is starting to reverse higher. So although we've moved beyond this price low to put in yet another price low, the indicator is actually moving higher and has put in a higher low. So again, once we see this dynamic starting to occur, we know that the move to the downside is probably not going to continue for much longer and we should be on the lookout for reversal opportunities. OK, so once we see bullish divergence like this creeping in, we should be on the lookout for buying opportunities. And as you can see, shortly after that divergence uh, identifies is identified, you can see that price reverses and starts to rally higher. So divergence is another really fantastic way in which we can use this indicator to highlight trading opportunities. And whereas fading the RSI is quite a basic and simple method where we're just looking for the indicator to move into extreme levels, looking to highlight divergence in the market is where we start to step up our trading gain and start to think about price movement and the indicator readings in a slightly more advanced, more strategic way. And this is where we can start to get an advantage over other traders because we're starting to sort of read between the lines in the market and identify these uh, specific dynamics which we know can yield certain outcomes. So this approach then divergence can be particularly useful at key support and resistance levels. So what I've shown you just so far are the examples of what bearish and bullish divergence are and how they show up on the indicator. But now we can start to think about the specific locations in which we'd like to identify bullish and bearish divergence. And looking to trade them at key support and resistance levels is a really fantastic way in which we can use um, divergence to our advantage. So let's take a look at this example then here. So you can see straight away then on this example, what we've got is a classic double top formation. So for those of you who were in uh, the price action pattern webinar that we did, and for those of you who are familiar with price patterns, you'll know this is a classic bearish reversal pattern. So you can see we've got these two big tops here, which form a reversal point before price sells off. Now, while some traders would be happy to trade price actions just on their own, Again, what we always want to be looking to do is to improve our chances of success. And a really fantastic way to improve our chances of success when we're trading patterns 
is to add in extra criteria for taking a trade. And one really fantastic way to do this is to use indicators in combination with the patterns. And the RSI indicator is a particularly fantastic tool for doing this. So the way in which we look to use patterns and indicators together then is to identify confluence between indicator readings and the chart patterns. So, for example, once we see this double top developing, and we know we've got a bearish um, chart pattern in place suggesting that price is going to move to the downside. We then want to look to our RSI indicator to see what it is telling us about momentum in the market, to see if it is giving us a bearish signal. OK, and you can see that it is, in fact, giving us a bearish signal because what we've actually got here is a really strong example of bearish divergence. So look at this price high here and the high that the indicator made when price made that first high. We got a correction lower in price. And then look, as price traded all the way back up and indeed even pierced above that first high, look how much lower the indicator was as that was happening. So again, once we see that lower high in place compared with the price high, we know that bullish pressure is waning in the market and that we should be on the lookout for a reversal. And so at this point here, We've got our bearish chart pattern in play with our double top, which we know is a classic bearish reversal pattern. And then we've got our confluence signal on the indicator with our bearish divergence. So once we identify these two signals in confluence with each other, we then have a much stronger conviction for taking our bearish trade. And you can see that shortly after that double top was made with divergence, price cratered lower. OK, so, for example, then, another way that we can use the indicator is in um, looking to trade, is in looking to protect against false breakouts, rather, OK? So, for example, here, you can see that as price trades up to make this first high, and then we trade up to break out above this second high, you can see that the indicator is putting in a higher high, OK? So, what we're looking to do here is we're looking for the indicator to confirm our conviction for trading. So whereas we were just looking at the indicator in terms of how we can use it to trade reversals, here we're looking to the indicator to confirm our reasons for trading a breakout. Okay, So breakouts are a very simple trading method in which we look to trade price as it expands beyond a certain point. So if this is our high point in the market and price is rallying strongly up and we're looking to trade a breakout above that level, we want to look to the indicator and see that the indicator is confirming strength in the market. And as you can see, as this high was being broken, the indicator was putting in a higher high compared with the previous high that was made when that price high was put in. So at this point, we know that there's still firm buying pressure in the market and we can go ahead and put in our buy trade. Now, again, as price was breaking the out of this high, okay, so as we've got this big green candle breaking out above this high, you can see that the indicator once again was confirming that we had strong buying pressure in the market and we were putting in another high. However, if we then look at this final example here, if we were looking to trade a breakout to the top side here, this is one where we either show a little bit more caution, um, a little bit more conservative in terms of how we trade the size. So we might put on a smaller trading size. Or alternatively, we might look to stay out of the trade altogether because you can see that the indicator was putting in a much lower high. So with each prior break, with each prior breakout that we've seen, the indicator was confirming the move by putting in a higher high on the RSI reading, showing that there was stronger buying pressure in the market. But at this final point here, as price was breaking out above that high, we actually had bearish divergence in the market telling us that the move was unlikely to continue and that it was likely to fail. So this would be a really good reason to stay out of this trade. So in this respect, you can see how the RSI indicator can be a really fantastic tool in terms of working as a filter for taking trades. OK, so it's not our specific reason for taking a trade, OK, because we're looking to just trade breakouts, but we can use it as a tool to tell us whether or not a trade is likely to work out and whether we should stay out of the market or not. So it can be extremely effective for helping traders in this respect. OK, and then finally, then one of the last ways in which we can use the indicator, which is a slightly more uh, advanced way to use the indicator, is looking to uh, use corrections within the RSI indicator itself to add to our trade. So 
Looking back at our example then from where we had the double top and price sold off. So you can see that once price breaks down below this big support level, so once price is broken down below this big support level and price is trading to the downside, so you can see the indicator has moved into extreme bearish territory here. Okay, so we've moved below that oversold level. We're trading heavily below the oversold level and price is continuing to trade lower. What we can actually look to do this time is enter sell trades as price corrects up to the 50 level. Okay, so you can see this red horizontal line, which I put in the RSI chart here. So this red 50 level sits between the 70 and the 30 level. And so what this is doing is highlighting the midpoint of this range. So it's the midpoint of the 70 and the 30 level. And what we'll often find is that in heavily trending markets, the midway point of this range will act as either support or resistance. So if the market is in a bullish trend and it corrects from overbought territory back into the 50 level, it can act as support. And then alternatively, in a bearish trend where price is moving heavily to the downside, once the indicator has crossed into oversold territory, if it corrects higher and trades back up into the 50 level, this can often act as resistance and be a really good place for us to enter a sell trade. So look at what we see in the chart here then. Price is broken down below this big support level. We're trending heavily to the downside. The indicator has crossed below the oversold reading. Okay, We stay heavily below it. We start to correct higher here. At this point here, we trade up and hit the 50 level. And you can see that price has made a small correction to the top side. However, the indicator hits the midpoint of the, uh, the indicator range. And then we see a correction lower price sells off. OK, the indicator sells off. But then at this point here, price corrects higher again. And the indicator again trades back up and hits this 50 level, the midpoint, and gives us another opportunity to enter the bearish trend. OK, so this is another advanced way in which we can look to use the indicator. And again, this uh, really comes down to how much time you're willing to spend studying the indicator and studying the relationship between the indicator and price. Because once you start to become comfortable uh, with how the indicator and price move together and the sort of reactions that we see from specific conditions in the indicator, then you can start to highlight and pick out really great trading opportunities such as this one. OK, so earlier on in the session, we were looking at how in a trending market, you can wait for the indicator to move all the way back over to the other side before taking a trade. And so this is sort of the foundation way of using the indicator and the basic way in which you should start out when you're being conservative. Once you start to become more familiar, and more confident with using the indicator, and once you've done your homework and spent time studying it, then you can start to step up your trading. And you can start to take advantage of some of these other dynamics which tend to play out over and over. And this is a really fantastic way for you to gain really unique entry points into the market. And the fantastic thing is, as with all of these techniques and methods that we look at, OK, so if you weren't using the RSI indicator, if you weren't familiar with the indicator, you wouldn't have any basis for taking any of these trades that we've looked at. But the great thing is, once you start to become comfortable with these indicators and confident with them, and you really learn what the indicator is telling you about price and how price and the indicators move together, then you can really start to pick out some unique trade opportunities that give you a strong advantage over other traders. OK, so I hope you've really enjoyed this session then. It's been really great to go back over the RSI indicator. It's one of my favorite indicators to trade with. And again, this comes down to its simplicity and its effectiveness. And I hope that the methods and techniques we've discussed here today are going to be really useful to you all. And I look forward to hearing some feedback about the different methods that we've, uh, we've looked at. So before I, uh, I end the session today, then, are there any questions I can answer for anyone? Brilliant. OK, yeah, the recording of this will be available and it will be sent out to, uh, to everyone it will send out to everyone who's registered for this. So don't worry if you if you join late or if you had to leave early, you'll get the recording of uh, of this webinar. And yeah, please uh, just stay tuned to the website for uh, for details of the next webinar. OK, everyone, I look forward to catching up with you all next time. Thanks a lot for joining me today and uh, take it easy and take care and I'll catch you next time. Thank you. Goodbye.